What is going on my pizza board versatile is back with another video back here to talk about one UI 2.5 that just dropped on the Samsung Galaxy S20 series. Yes, Samsung is doing a much better job getting these updates out uh, faster for their Samsung Galaxy devices. The S20 now has many features that the Note 20 now has, that the Z Flip has. Of course, Z Flip has its own individual is uh, <laughs> issues, uh, features, so that's gonna be another video, but I will use this to demonstrate a couple of features that we now have with One UI 2.5. But before we get into the video, make sure you guys ignite the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that way YouTube informs you when I drop videos. Yes, YouTube won't let you know a thing unless in you hit that notification bell. So go ahead and do that. Now, let's get into the video. So one of the things that we know that One UI 2.1 brought to Samsung Galaxy devices was music share. And that is the ability to share your music through your device for other devices. So that sounds a bit confusing, but it's not. So what we can do is I'm going to pair the Samsung Galaxy Buds to my Galaxy Z Flip 5G, and then I'm going to try to connect this to this. So far, I've only had success with the music share feature, music share feature with Samsung devices, so it should, we shouldn't have a problem in this video. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll put you to the side, flip this baby open, boom. Let's get in here real quick, unlock. Here we go, Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. Now it suddenly wants to have a bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. It should connect to my Z Flip with no issues. It is. Boom, it's connected there, right? So now this is what I wanna do. I wanna take this phone. Well, actually I'm gonna go here and I'm going to hold on music share. It's in your quick toggles, of course. And as it says, you know, let nearby Friends, play music on your Bluetooth speaker on this phone, turn on music share and connect to a speaker on your friend's phone. Go to the list of Bluetooth devices, tap the speaker to connect, then start playing music. So as you guys can see, you'll have your list of content down here, your Bluetooth devices that you can do. And then yeah, you wanna make sure you share devices with everyone. Now, of course you don't have to, you can just do contacts, ask every time or, or, or always get permission basically. And then the disconnect time or inactivity is set for 10 minutes. So now that that's happening, I'm going to take this phone, the Galaxy S20, I'm gonna go into Bluetooth and it should allow me to connect Boom, right, oh, yep, via, uh, my wife had me minking here. So with music share, if I do that, and then I hit accept on this phone, ex you know, accept or deny, hit accept. Now I can share music through this phone on this phone that will play and output through the Galaxy Buds. So now that it's connected, if I wanted to go over here and, you know, play some music, let's see. I mean, uh, you guys won't be able to hear it, but you know, let's play some Chris Brown from here. You guys won't be able to hear it, but it is playing on the Galaxy Buds. So that's something that I wanted to show you guys real quick with Music Share. Some people didn't actually know what that was, but it's a very, very great feature. And it definitely works in the car. Like if you both want to sync up devices on uh, to play music and on the car radio, because most of the time you can only have one connected device at a time, this works perfectly, Music Share. Now, what was the next feature that we got in 2.1? that had now upgraded to 2.5. Well, that was Samsung's quick share. So if we come back in here and go to quick, uh, the quick settings again, you actually don't see it here anymore, but quick share used to be in here. <laughs> it really did. Uh, quick share was Samsung's version of AirDrop, which means it only worked with Samsung devices. So if you wanted to share files, both video and photos or whatever between devices seamlessly, you would hit quick share on one Samsung device. The screen had to be on in the other one. And you would hit uh, a select it on the device you're trying to send or receive from and it would seamlessly share content. Well, Google's integration of nearby share has now taken place of quick share on Samsung devices, meaning you have to have Bluetooth and location on, but now using nearby share, Let's say I wanted to share a, 
let's go to gallery and let's go to a picture I've taken recently of the Z Flip. If I wanted to share this to my Z Flip, I would take my Z Flip, open it, place it down here. Oh, again, I gotta be in. Remember, screen on folks, screen on. All right, so now that that's on right there, my lighting is so, all right, boom. So with this, what I would do is tap share in the share icon right here. And then nearby share pops up right there. So if I hit nearby share, guess what's going to pop up? Device nearby is sharing on here. So if I want to tap to become visible, boom. Now you guys can see Versatile's phone pops up. I can share this picture over to my Z Flip. If I hit that, it's connecting. And then I have to hit accept on my Z Flip. And then as you guys can see, file was sent just like that. And then now I can open this device with gallery and there's a picture. So it works seamlessly. And one of the things I found funny, I haven't quite tried to do it outside of a foot because it said a foot. So I, I don't know if I have this over here and I try it again, you guys won't be able to see, but I'll talk. So if I want to share another picture, it's similar and I want to hit this, then it will not work. Oh no. Okay. There's my phone. And all right, so it still works. So for some reason, settings in, uh, in the settings, it says you have to be at least one foot together or something like that. So uh, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe they meant one meter, because I was gonna say it's pretty much an upgraded Android Beam. <laughs> for those who remember Android Beam, leave down comments in the sec <laughs> comment section below. But I was a little surprised when they said that to be a minute, I mean, a minute, or foot together in order for that to work, but I was, easily you guys can't tell on this desk but this desk is more than a foot well this table i should say it's more than a foot apart like it's probably two to three feet maybe even three and a half feet and i went from one end to the other and connected just fine so that's a little bit interesting keep that in mind but it looks like that's not an issue for nearby share that has now been integrated in in samsung one ui 2.5 what else? If you swipe up to go into your apps, your app screen, and you hit the three dots right here, you go into finder settings, you no longer have customization services. Now, I never used it, so I never really found that to be a big deal. But what's nice is you can add a finder icon to your app screen as well. So that way you didn't always have to come in here per se. You could just go to the finders app. And then, of course, if, if you click on about finder, it'll let you know if it's the latest installed. I like finder settings. I never really used it like that, but I didn't realize how good it was. So if I click out and I go in here, and let's say, you know, yes, I agree for nearby places a lot of time, not a big deal to me. If I wanted to search in YouTube, you know, or something similar to YouTube, and you, it'll bring up all the search stuff for YouTube. So search, subscription, and explore. I can search all within the finder settings. I don't even have to open the app. And in contacts, you can likewise look up different contacts if you had to. So very, very clean, neat feature for Finder settings and its improvements with One UI 2.5. The other thing that everybody really wanted, Netflix, uh, Netflix oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, Samsung to fix from One UI 2.1 to One UI 2.5 was navigation gestures for third-party launchers, launchers. So yes, your Nova launcher, I would imagine maybe Action Launcher or Launcher Launcher. Those launchers can now use Google's, you know, navigation gestures within those third party launchers. Now, of course, with every third party launcher, there's some hiccups nonetheless with navigating, but you can do that now on One UI 2.5. What you can also do is in Messages, the Messages app, if you wanted to, good, you can't see no numbers. You can actually edit your categories in here now. Now, I have that better displayed on my Z Flip. So I think for this video, I might do that for my Z Flip. And you can't see no number. You can actually edit your categories now. So if you come in here, you can edit categories. You can edit who's in your friends list and, and then you know delete categories if you needed to. The other thing you can also do, <clears throat> now that we're done there, one of the things you can also do is search within let's see i'm gonna use this little fake number here i can actually now search okay we're gonna stop being funny i can search right within the samsung keyboard 
I can search Spotify, Samsung Pass. I can edit text. I got the clipboard in here. I got different modes and YouTube. I can search YouTube in here. So of course I have to, uh, um, it's kind of, okay, okay, oh, how about that? So I can search YouTube right within here and share video links right within the messages app. That's pretty cool. I wish you can kind of, I wish you could do that with a Gboard. And I've also noticed that Samsung has greatly improved the Samsung keyboard, so it's not a pain to use. I don't like where they have certain symbols when you want to just long press for symbols. But outside of that, and they don't have like the backspace to delete more than just one letter, you know, like with Gboard, you can delete words. I wish they added it to the Samsung keyboard because I probably would use it. But nonetheless, you got that feature right within the Samsung keyboard now, be able to search YouTube videos. One of my most beloved features on Samsung devices is the edge panel and specifically this app tray here. Well, Samsung did a great service to the app tray by integrating the multi-window app tray into this app tray. So as you guys have seen with the Galaxy Tab S6, you can actually use multi-window app tray to multitask and, and do split view with apps so now with here it's the same thing but it's a little tricky so these four apps up here are like your most recently used apps so like maybe like let's say if i was already in youtube music and i swiped over so i'm already in here let's say i want to bring settings let's say i click settings now if i swipe back over and i want to bring youtube music back i click now I drag and then boom just like that so you have to click on one app first and then click on the next app separately or click and hold this the second app and then drag where you want to place it and then that's how you will split screen and of course you can change the size and the snapdragon 865 is clean and the snapdragon 865 plus is even more clean and then you know when you're done just swipe all the way down and the app is gone of course alternatively you can actually have split screen app pairs already in your little slots i don't do that often but I like this feature nonetheless. I really like it. And it was a great improvement to the edge panel. Now going on to, into the camera, we have some settings in the camera as well. So if we double tap there, <laughs> we have more pro, well, I guess with photo controls, if you, this might've been 2.1, but I noticed in 2.5, if you swipe down your burst shot, as you guys saw, I took about 11 photos. And if we, you know, click, I just took 11 photos, you know, yeah, right here. There's all the photos I took. Now I don't care for those, so goodbye. If I go back, but then if you swipe up, you can actually replace the shutter button. So like, let's say you're taking a picture and you want to have to click down here because your finger is all kind of just not in a great place to hit the shutter button. You can hit it right here, take a picture and you're done. And then swipe it back down if you had to. The other thing they've added is more pro video controls, such as being able to control your mics. So if we go into pro video, there's a feature right here. It's a microphone. If you click it, you can actually select where you want mic or audio to pick up from. So in the, in the Galaxy S20's case, it's multi-directional because there's several different mics. Then there's a front mic. There's the rear, the front mic is down here at the bottom. The rear mic is up here at the top. And then you have USB so if you have a, a USB you know microphone plugged into your phone you can select that to use and then you can also select a Bluetooth device I mean if I had these connected or another Bluetooth mic or even headset I can select that to be my audio source instead as well so that's very nice integral controls and then you can also change your DB game from minus 12 to plus 12 very very clean you can also if you open this up, you go to rear video, you can now shoot natively 16 by nine, 8K video at 24 frames per second in pro video. So that's also also very, very nice. And as uh, you can in regular video, when you're recording, you can switch cameras while you're recording from your wide to your ultra wide. So that's also very, very neat. So Samsung's been doing a very, very good job of handling their camera. Uh, and their camera controls as well as their improved video controls and video quality and one of the other things that Samsung has really done well is you know add cool little features like 2.1 added single take and added pro video controls period 
and with 2.5 it just looked to update that even further as you guys saw in pro video you also have your audio levels and then over here you also have a histogram that you can add to that as well so and then it kind of they kind of move some stuff around up there at the top as well but those are the 2.5 control or uh, one UI 2.5 features that they've added to the Samsung Galaxy S20 uh, devices one other thing to keep note of I almost forgot is if I swipe up I go into my Samsung folder and I come over here to the recorder app where is it what okay Okay, if I go over here to the recorder app, this is Samsung's, I was gonna say, this is Samsung's voice recorder app. If I hit record, I can bookmark certain points in the audio recording that I wanna come back to. So when I hit stop and I hit save as video one, let's say, I can, I don't know if I can do that per se, but I can actually, I can actually go back to these and add notes to those specific mo moments. Samsung has also added wireless decks to One UI 2.5 that will allow you to wirelessly connect decks to your smart TV, specifically a Samsung smart TV. Now I've already tried this and it works literally seamless, but if you can, if you hit the decks button in your quick toggle settings, it's going to search for your TV. Start on here and if I hit start now, it will take over the TV in my living room. I'm not going to do that. But as you guys can see, it'll show you what can be selected down below in here. The TV can be selected. That's really nice. And you can enlarge the screen zoom with index to make it utilize your TV that much more. That's a very, very good feature. Another feature is share Wi-Fi. That is One UI 2.5 for Samsung's Galaxy devices. Specifically here on the S20, it should be no different on the S20 Plus, S20 Ultra and any other forthcoming One UI 2.5 phone. That's the nice thing about Samsung is they're, they've really taken a book out of Apple's page in terms of providing us with synchronicity and like a unified software experience with their phones. Like I said, I'll be bringing another video. It's probably not gonna be as long because the Z Flip only has specific functions because of the nature of the phone in this foldable. But nonetheless, I'll bring that video to you guys soon. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys think, what you guys like or appreciate it uh, from Samsung or from this video or One UI 2.5. Let me know down in the comments below. But if you haven't already, make sure you guys ignite that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you, if you haven't already. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that way YouTube informs you when I drop videos. Yes, YouTube won't let you know a thing unless you hit that notification bell. So go ahead and do that right there. With your boy Versatile signing out. And until the next video. Wait, oh.